to the touchline here on Y254 on a considering that the rains are back in Nairobi but it's also a day that we are discussing many things that are happening in the world of sports considering that due to the COVID-19 pandemic sports gradually is coming back to life after three months of being in the darkness. As usual, Maxwell is here with us to discuss everything with the fans of, but someone who has been not been on this set for a while now, Joe Saina, is also back for the fans on. Joe, welcome to the fans on. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing very okay. Yeah. Um, it, has been, uh, it has been a long time since I was here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the good thing is that football is back, something that we love, yeah. something that um, has been keeping us going for the last couple of years. Yeah. And I'm just excited that uh, we can get through to for, this. For, for the, I think now we're in 77 day. Uh, due, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and all that, and then sports was cut off. Mm. How have you been surviving in those three months? Well, um, apart from relieving past past games, yeah. obviously, uh, a bit of the Champions League, the mm -hmm. World Cup, yeah. uh, like we're, there's an anniversary right now. Mm -hmm. um, in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, six years ago, yeah. you know, a lot of things happened. There was a header from Van Persie. Yeah. There was the saves by Tim Howard. Mm -hmm. There was a volley from Cahill, so a lot happened then, so we've been relieving those football games. Yeah. Also, we've been catching up with the Bundesliga, yeah. that at least restored some parity mm -hmm. in terms of the football that we've been enjoying. And uh, I'm glad to see that at least last night, you know, AC Milan played with Juventus. So slowly and slowly, it's coming back. Yeah, Yes. even though without fans. Without fans, yes, which yeah. is a very, which is a very big <laughs> disappointment. But yes. um, I think if you're a true football fan, yeah. if you appreciate the game, uh -huh. uh, you will understand the, the situation we are in. But enjoy the beautiful game. Wow, big one there. So La Liga is also resuming after three months. It will actually be on our screens from today. The Serie A. We have started with Coppa Italia, which you have mentioned earlier. With the Juventus making on to the final, mm -hmm. and they are waiting today between. Napoli and the Inter Milan. That game will actually be at 10 today and see who is going to pass that one. The EPL will be back next, uh, starting the 17th and all through to that weekend. The English Premier League will be back. The Bundesliga, their fourth weekend since the resumption and they are still happening with it. But before we go deep into discussing everything that is happening in the world of sports at the moment, we've got to discuss something that even the sports people have now come out to support, and that is Black Lives Matter. One of the biggest sports stars of this generation, uh, British and World Boxing Federation champion, Anthony Joshua, actually came out and said that racism is a virus and it should be declared a pandemic. Big statement from Anthony Joshua there. Yes, it is. I mean, we are, we have been uh, we have been under this cloud of racism mm -hmm. and um, injustices against different races for a while now. Not mm -hmm. only in the political satire, but also in the sports satire. Yeah. And now it's high time that sports uh, men and women talk about it. Yeah. I remember a better part of last season and uh, also the beginning of this season, Raheem Sterling was really attacked yes. on speaking up his mind. Mm -hmm. uh, we had also the likes of Daniel Sturridge mm -hmm. speaking up their mind, especially with the racism that has been happening to him outside England. Yes. So is it a pandemic? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it something that can be controlled? Yes. Is it that ignorance prevails? I believe so. Yeah. But if we undertake the necessary measures and yeah. make sure that racism, whether it's against African Americans, whether it's against the well, Caucasians, yes. whether it's against the Asians, whether it's mm. against the Arabs, all that yeah. put together, there should not be discrimination of race or yeah. color. Actually, this one started with the apparent death of George Floyd, who was killed in Minneapolis by a police officer who was kneeling on his neck. And it came out to say that he choked actually to death because he could not breathe. And demonstrations were happening all over the world talking about police brutality. But Maxwell, one of the things that have now come out of this is how people are reacting to it, how people, how organizations are reacting to it. The English Premier League has come out to support the National Football League in the United States, saying that we are not going to 
discriminate players who are going to kneel down during the national anthems due to the protest of police brutality. The NFL also came out and said that we are going to support the players who are going to kneel down. Waking up this morning, the EPL also said that now all the jersey numbers and names will be printed in black and with black armbands to show that racism is not wanted. So those are some of the measures that are coming out of these organizations. In due time, do you think it will work out? Definitely it will work out. And I like the fact that sportsmen overseas are standing up and declaring their stand on injustices happening like racism and that controversial killing of George Floyd. I think it's the same thing that, you know, Kenyan yeah. uh, athletes also are supposed to follow suit and emulate on what uh, sportsmen are yeah. doing at the international <laughs> scene because yeah. you know we understand sportsmen are public figures they are celebrity personalities mm -hmm. they draw huge following fanatical following and yeah. you know they enjoy a lot of support mm -hmm. so when they declare a stand i think definitely it will be replicated mm -hmm. at the lower level we've seen the likes of marcus rashford mm -hmm. even condemning the incident that happened yeah and you know michael jordan even mm -hmm. saying that he will start supporting an initiative that it will uh, be a crusader for yes. you know racism for yeah. you know injustices for ills and <laughs> you know vices that yeah. are happening to yeah. try to you know uh, suppress humanity yeah so i think it's a good move fantastic initiative mm -hmm. that's the way forward and how i wish that you know the local sportsmen the likes of victor wanyama captain for the national team yes the likes of you know uh, Eliud Kipchoge, world mm -hmm. marathon record holder, mm -hmm. a man who ran under two hours in the Ineos Challenge in Austria, yes. are supposed to declare their stand even locally yeah. when something is happening and it's not going well with humanity, yeah. with Kenyan population. Mm -hmm. They should declare their stand and condemn it. Yeah. And Joe, an another one that came out now that uh, will come out to talk about competency based and how you're supposed to perform was the England national team coach Southgate and Raheem Sterling came out and said that even the EPL should follow suit with having clubs should take an initiative of hiring black managers. Mm -hmm. Something that we have not seen for a very long time. I think it was, I think, Wolverhampton who had a black manager after their coach had been fired. Mm -hmm. Then we saw a black manager coming on to the fray. But we have not seen the EPL taking that concrete decision of hiring black managers. Performance aside, if the EPL or some clubs in the EPL do that, will that make that major difference, even that now that that person who is racist, we realize that now I, this thing is going to be done and with I like it, I don't. Yes, um, first of all, it creates that equality yeah. that uh, a black manager with his competence mm -hmm. can still manage top tier teams yes. in the Premier League, in the, in the EFL. Yeah. In the league, in League One, in League Two, in all, in all, in all across all platforms, yes. in all leagues in mm -hmm. England. Yeah. Okay, that's one. It creates mm -hmm. it creates that equality. Secondly, mm -hmm. it creates diversity in terms of mm -hmm. tactic, in terms of awareness of the game, mm -hmm. in terms of how managing how this manager is going to manage differently from another manager. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that across the board. We had a season whereby it was uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, yes. it was Wenger. Mm -hmm. Then came Mourinho, mm -hmm. uh, Benitez. Yes. Then again now came Pochettino mm -hmm. and Jürgen Klopp. Mm -hmm. So I don't see anything wrong with having a black manager if they've gone through the right UEFA badges, yes. gotten their coaching skills mm -hmm. right, yeah. and getting a chance to actually coach. Yeah. Now, the risk factor that some of these, ma or some of these uh, teams will think will be on the commercial side. And it's yes. very sad I'm going uh -huh. to say this. Yeah. But it's True. on the commercial True. side. Yeah. Commercially, they would believe, yeah. that they would articulate in their mind that black manager is not good for the team. Yeah. It's good as an assistant manager. It's good as a first team coach. Mm -hmm. But they're not seeing it there. Because yeah. look at the likes of Vieira. Look at yes. the likes of Clarence Ridoff, who mm -hmm. managed AC Milan. Yes. Vieira in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, look at now Claude Makelele, who has gone back to Chelsea. Yes. But now, and are coaching, and are coaching yet, mm -hmm. he has credentials to be a manager in terms of his badges. Yes. So it's giving these personalities mm -hmm. a bigger platform mm -hmm. to show that, you know what, 
not only are we competent, mm -hmm. we can be equal to our peers. Yeah. And that's something that Raheem Sterling has been pushing. For. Yeah. Yes. Big conversations there when it comes to sports and racism and where we stand as sportsmen and say that this is enough and this is what we are going to do. So some of those changes are a Black Lives Matter bat will be featuring in all the playing shots of the EPL along the for the rest of the season and also there will be a badge also thanking the national hospital staff in the UK who have been working tirelessly during this COVID-19 pandemic. It is the touchline here on Y254. Um, you are just joining us. It is Fun Zone right now. I'm Robert Osoro. Joe Saina is here with us today. And uh, my co host, Maxwell Wasike, is also here in the studio with us. So, as we are going ahead to discuss everything that is happening in the world of sports, let's also throw in the spanner because now. FIFA is going to allow a transfer window to open in the current season, considering that we, during this is the time when we should be having some of the transfers, mid-transfer window, but it's not happening because of the pandemic and everything. But they are saying that because of the delayed season, there will be going to be a lengthy transfer window. Mm. Good riddance uh, for clubs? Yeah, if you look at it from those two points, it's good riddance because... Um, first of all, you get your players early enough yeah. into into early season training, mm -hmm. get them into shape because again that break has been long. Mm -hmm. That's one, two. The readiness of the coming season yeah. dependent because here we have the Premier League resuming, Syria A, mm -hmm. Bundesliga yes. resuming. Yes, we still don't have something concrete about the other competitions. Yes. Coppa Italia is going on, mm -hmm. the FA, for example, the FA Cup. Ah, uh, yeah. We have the St. Johnston Cup, which is happening in the lower leagues, yeah. which are not, which still are not um, confirmed yet. Yeah. Now, and then we have the bigger ones, the Europa Leagues, the Champions League. Yeah. At some point, we should have had Euro 2020. Yeah. So imagine if you could have squeezed all those matches between now and Together. theoretically, yes. before the end of August, so that you can start a new season in September. Yeah. So I think for managers right now, it's important to get your key players early enough, mm -hmm. get them into the training cup. Yeah, and considering that the, if the transfer window is going to be open, who are just some of the transfer interests out there that have really got your eye, Max? Of course, plenty of players, mm -hmm. teams are chasing after them, mm -hmm. you know, teams seeking to bolster their squads mm -hmm. ahead of, you know, resumption of... Uh, normal sporting activities, yes. elite European leagues. I think one prominent man we have to mention is Jadon Sancho. A lot <laughs> of teams are chasing after his acquisition. He's yes. currently at Dortmund, but unsatisfied. We've seen even the tactician for the Borussia Dortmund not giving him a prominent role, except that one he scored a hat-trick. But yes. in previous three matches since Bundesliga resumed, he was uh, getting on the L bench. Likely destination likely for destination, Sancho. Likely destination, of course. Most likely Man United. We've seen, we've seen, we've seen, we've seen, we've seen. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the purchase power is there. The, <laughs> the purchase seen, power is there. We've yes. seen, yeah. because the interest in Jack Grealish yeah. by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has mm -hmm. diminished mm -hmm. drastically. And considering they play same position at 10, which means Sancho will be the main option. He's an Englishman, he's proved yeah. in another foreign league. So I think he can really replicate the same yeah. at in United England. in English Premier League. So Neymar also... <laughs> Yeah. Talking point mm -hmm. with regards to his return to Barcelona, to Barcelona. But I think the likelihood, the chances are also scanty. Osman Dembele mm -hmm. has been on and off on the sidelines on mm -hmm. injury, injury list yeah. and is not very consistent. So I think plenty of players making the talking point. Nem names are being thrown outside there. I also saw Ansu Fatu, mm -hmm. the Barcelona wonder kid, being thrown into being linked to Manchester United. Sancho also being linked to um, Manchester United. Um, um, yeah. from Leipzig, the defender, highly rated. Do those transfers really look like they can materialize for Manchester United? I mean, the, uh, in the last two weeks, we've been seeing this battle between Liverpool and Chelsea to sign Tivo Warner. Yes. And Chelsea got the latter bit of mm -hmm. it with yeah. an undisclosed figure between 56 million to about 65 million pounds, yeah. depending on the closes. So again, if such a deal can be made yeah. and can be finalized, I don't see why other major deals can be made. The likes of Sancho, yeah. uh, he, he not only links to Manchester United, mm -hmm. but also surprisingly Manchester City because yeah. there's, an uncertainty, there's an uncertainty with Riyad Mahrez. So they're and looking, Sane also and living Sane, for Bayern. And Sane going to Bayern Munich. Yeah. So you're looking at, uh, you know, 
sell one player, replace them immediately. Mm -hmm. um, if you look again at uh, Liverpool, they're looking to strengthen the defence, something mm -hmm. that people are really surprised with. Mm -hmm. But they're having an ageing defence, Lovren. Yeah. Is, is you know his legs are still not there you know you're looking at uh, Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez yeah. if one of them gets hurt who's going to come in mm -hmm. so Umpambano from uh, Leipzig is also someone they're scouting yes so yes these deals can come through and like I said earlier mm. if we can make sure that those players get into the camps early enough yeah. it can be better for these teams and but the you, see, you see you see yes the likes of Mino Raiola and and, uh -huh. and George Mendes top football agents yes in the world they know very well how using the name Manchester United can spice the up, link between the uh, name spice and up, the transfer and spice yeah. up you know the interest from other clubs yes. in a player United mm -hmm. is chasing after yeah. because even you know the chances that you know price tag will get hiked when our yeah. players linked to United yeah. are very high so we've seen Man United getting linked to everyone yeah. but at long last I think it's high time this Ed Woodward guy who is the chief executive for the club yes now stamps authority and be in charge and goes for these players that are getting associated with. You see Chelsea, mm. at no point we saw them getting interested in Timo Vano. Yeah. Mm. It was Liverpool all along, but suddenly, yeah, true story, uh, true, ultimately true. we saw Frank Lampard, you yeah. know, uh, being, you know... Uh, He's starting out to be a very good mastermind in transfer. Yeah, ZH. Yeah, ZH. ZH. That, yeah. Uh, Stamford Bridge, now Timo Vano, and now they're chasing after Ben Chilwell from mm. Leicester, the left back. Yes. Seeking forward to strengthen their back line. Mm. I think United now needs to stop this fact of you know, getting associated with these players, but at long run, mm. they don't sign them. Yeah. Mm. Jack Grealish, James Madison, Jadon Sancho. Th that's a very, a very serious conversation we should be having with the people of marketing and branding because these are the people who know the link between the brand mm. and the money. Mm. Those are how they are doing. Those are, that's, uh, if, if I'm rightly getting what you are saying from these sports agents, that's what they are doing, mm. the brand. But in all this transfer window and everything, how come we are not getting serious news from the Arsenal camp? Well, again, um, I, I wouldn't want to take anything away from Arsenal fans yeah. right now and from the club itself. Um, where they were in the beginning of January, yeah. um, Mikel Arteta set out to buy two defenders. Yes. And he got the two defenders, a right back and a centre back. Mm -hmm. Okay, And that was something that he believed that was lacking. Yeah. Right now, if you look at it from hindsight, mm -hmm. again, the, the partnership, the trio partnership, Yes. between Pepe, Aubameyang and Lacazette. Mm -hmm. That's something still they're working on. Yeah. Although that is a powerful attacking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you want to stabilize the, that, that first three? Mm -hmm. Do you want to change maybe the system? Yeah. Maybe start with, the, with two up front and one acting as a number 10. And then maybe go into the transfer market and get like two decent midfielders. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, those are things that maybe Ateta can look at. Yeah. But for me, from, the, from an attacking perspective, yeah. I believe they have one of the sharpest attacking, yeah. not only in England, but I think in Europe. But if they get it right, if yeah. they get it right, if they get it right, the trio, okay? Because yeah. Pepe, Pepe came in with so much, um, so much psych, came yeah. in with so much expectations, yes. and those expectations mm -hmm. were dwindled immediately after the second game. Yeah. Aubameyang has been there, Lacazette has been there. Lacazette has some brilliant moments. Mm -hmm. uh, Aubameyang has some brilliant moments at the same time. Yeah. So it's just maintaining that between yeah. them to make sure that they can become those sorts of players. Yeah. Yes. A big one. There, as we are still discussing everything when it comes to football here in the country and abroad, I'm Robert Osoro, Josina is here, and Max Wasike, as we are discussing everything when it comes to sports here in the country and all around the world. The FA Cup was also renamed this week and it will now be called the Prince William Cup. And one of the major campaigns that the FA Cup will be championing this season and something that is at the heart of Prince William is mental health and how sports is actually a catalyst to help people who are suffering from mental health and people who have not suffered from mental health not to get to that situation. This is from back in the day, the FA Cup has, have, has had that link with the monarch yes. for a very, a mm -hmm. very long time. Mm -hmm. Now, but this time around, we are seeing Prince William take that initiative, take that initiative to bring it back home and make sure that the monarch is really influential and in really decision making of this cup. But mm -hmm. this time around, they have come with mental health, a campaign in mental health. 
-hmm. seems that mental health is, has become a very serious disease in the sports world. You know, and also yeah. worldwide, actually, not even in sports itself. Yes, mm -hmm. it has. And if you look at it from hindsight, mm -hmm. the FA mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom is the oldest football association in the world. Yes. The oldest. Mm -hmm. So there's the pedigree that is associated with it, with the royal family. Mm -hmm. Not only that, if you look from the commercial bit of it, it's yes. one of the glorified cups in the world. Mm -hmm. So if you would link it with something that is seriously bothering yeah. the community mm -hmm. as mental health, mm -hmm. it's an awareness that can be raised. Yeah. Not only that, we have been, we have been in the last... Um, if I can call it the last three months yeah. of a COVID season whereby you couldn't see loved ones, mm -hmm. you couldn't travel to see loved ones as a sports, as a sports person. Yeah. You, you, for example, if you take uh, Paul Pogba, he's always been living with his brothers and his mother, and yes. then all of a sudden, maybe that is taken away. So yeah. for some sportsmen, that and women, that can affect them, mm -hmm. and this can bring in the mental health uh, situation. Yeah. So that is why it's important, mm -hmm. yes, to advocate for it, and I'm, I'm very happy that something like this has been advocated for, mm -hmm. to push also mm -hmm. other leagues to advocate for mental health. Yes. We've been going about uh, racism, which mm -hmm. is, yes, it, it, it's a pandemic, yes, yeah. but that these other matters, you mm -hmm. know, we've been talking about cancer, now we're talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. Let it be expounded further. Yeah. But it's an initiative that the FA have taken that is a brilliant move mm -hmm. to make sure that mental health is put on the world map yeah. as a worrying catalyst that has been going on in the world. Yeah. Yes. Big one there for us as we are following I'm some of the discussions. That, you know, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, players are suffering in silence. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Because there true. is this condemnation from uh, from fans mm -hmm. who want a player to deliver on the mm -hmm. pitch. Yet you mm -hmm. don't know what the player is going through mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Someone yeah. like Alexis Sanchez, I saw some quotes. Yes. Uh, from Under Herrera saying that you know mm -hmm. sometimes football is 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 hard to understand it because yeah. a player who's just come from a team a few months ago, he's mm -hmm. been in sparkling form. He joins another team yes. then his form Detorial. diminishes yes. and uh, it becomes a worst performer on the pitch yeah. mm. and things you know just go haywire like that you know it's hard to understand but i think mm. if you sit uh, exclusively with alexis sanchez whatever he might be going through mm. yeah. are, as a result of what is happening mm. uh, yeah. the reality on the pitch. Of it, yeah. we saw even yes i lingered we've yes, seen condemnation lingered, yes. on yes, yes i lingered mm -hmm. but I think at long last he revealed what yeah. he's been going through, how the mother, mm -hmm. the yeah. sister mm -hmm. have been suffering mm -hmm. through cancer. He's the one who's been taking care, uh, of, care of them mm -hmm. in terms of medication and yes. even standing by their families because I think he's sort of the only breadwinner. But you see, for Man United fans, they want Jesse Lingard to deliver mm -hmm. on, on the, the field. Pitch, yes, uh, true, and true. accuse him of shenanigans. Side it, you know, it, it, it's good you have brought that angle because it takes me back to Eric Cantona mm. kicking a fan. Remember, even Greg Bellamy fighting mm. with a fan. Because at the end of the day, for us fans, when we go to the stadium, we just want them to be at 120% performance, not taking care, not even wanting to know what their life is yep. outside the field of play. And that's a very serious, serious scenario. I think there are players I miss and mm. probably would have some version of the same yeah. in current football. I miss Joe Burton. You remember him during his Newcastle stint. Mm. Yes. Very controversial, calling a spade a spade. Yeah. You know a fan would want him to do something that probably is not capable of doing. Then you yes. tell the fan off. I mm. think uh, the likes of Roy Keane, I yes. think he's of the same character. Mm -hmm. You know, people Next like of Gattuso, uh, mm -hmm. Gennaro you know, Gattuso, level headed men. Yeah. El Haji, El Haji <laughs> Diop. Yeah, I was yeah. reading the mirror yeah. at some point when he joined Liverpool from Bolton Wanderers. Steven yes. Gerrard was the captain, mm -hmm. and I think Steven was a disciplinarian. He wanted to instill, you know, a sense of discipline, discipline yeah. amongst players. But he, sometimes it could get to an opportunity where El Haji Diop is telling of his captain, Come mm -hmm. on, man. Considering that you have taken us back to nostalgic memories of back in the day of these players and everything, one thing that we had on the running order was, can you believe it's been 10 years since Africa hosted the World Cup? Or oh, South Africa. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> but it looks, it, looks, it looks like it happened yesterday. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you, can, you can even bypass that there was Brazil in between. You can bypass there was Brazil in between. There was Russia in between. You can bypass that. Yes. And you remember yeah. hey, the Vuvuzela. It's the really, it's really, really, it's really The Vuvuzela and that Shabalala goal. Shabalala. Yeah. <laughs> South Africa playing at home, yeah. you know. Now, you one of the countries that is well equipped in terms of facilities, yes. you know, a lot of... 
mm -hmm. crowd fans showing up in large numbers. Yes. I think but it was nostalgic. But that's Spain we, team. We, that's we, Spain we, team. We, I was back in high school. I was in my last year of high school, mm -hmm. doing my Form 6 back then. Mm -hmm. And then the World Cup is in South Africa. And we watched it during the school. We saw the Shabalala goal and everything. But one thing that can never get out of my mind mm -hmm. was those devil hands of Luis Suarez. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> one of the most controversial players at these big stages. Yes. He and always does something in these big yes. stages. And you see, you see, for us, we keep condemning Luis Suarez. Of course, yes. it will never fade in the history books of football. Yes. But he did what he did to save his national team, yes. Uruguay. Yeah. They made it to the semi-finals. Yeah, I think a Samoa uh, Also, is, that kick is, is, is another is, kick we'll never forget. This incident yeah. is also unforgettable. Of course, missing out mm -hmm. on converting a penalty that probably could have propelled Black Stars of Ghana to the semi final stage. Yeah. Yes. The, and the goal know, that was rejected for Frank Lampard. The goal that yes. was rejected against for Frank Germany. Lampard yes. against Chelsea, against uh, Germany. 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 I think it ended 4 2. Yeah. And probably some pundits saying that if that girl, that goal would have been allowed, yeah. then. The, there is the outcome of that particular match would have been something different. Mm. So, Joe, w what are your best and worst memories from the 2010 World Cup? Um, the devil hand, obviously, yeah. from Luis Suarez. That would be the that would be very bad for me. Mm -hmm. I think the positive, and we keep on talking about these things, and we 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 miss out on the brilliance of Spain in that World Cup. Uh -huh, yes. When Tika Taka, yeah. free flowing football, mm -hmm. you know, Johan Cruyff system of play yes. was transported from Barcelona into Spain, and yeah. people could not understand mm -hmm. how Xavi and Iniesta and Busquets mm -hmm. would control that ball in the midfield and still have a chance to make sure the likes of David Silva, the likes of Fernando Torres would mm -hmm. get that ball. Yes. Ball playing defenders, something mm -hmm. that we hadn't yet discovered. Yeah. PK coming with the mm -hmm. ball almost halfway and right. giving a long pass. Mm -hmm. That's something that guys did not understand. And yeah. for me, mm -hmm. that was the highlight of that World Cup. Yeah. None, nothing taken away from the fact that Africa hosted a World Cup. Africa hosted that the World Cup. That will never be re yeah. replaced. I think, I think, I, 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 think I remember, <laughs> I remember <laughs> the World Cup and I think some guys SMSing me is called Walter Makoha. Yes. I think these are the people who used to watch this football together. <laughs> yes. Just after high school, you're not looking forward to joining the college. Yes. Then you're chilling at, uh -huh. you know, you back are home, there. Yeah. Back home yeah. with guys watching football, yes. and I think you know now club fanatism. People are carrying it into the, World Cup. Uh, you see, <laughs> <laughs> see someone but yeah. now that is a support of yeah. Arsenal yeah. and Mesut Ozil is playing for Germany, Germany. so yeah. definitely he will uh, rally behind uh, Die Mannschaft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wayne Rooney playing for United, now yeah. featuring for England. England. You have to support England. I think mm. Ozil is goal against Ghana. That's that class. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember they were under 21s then? Mm. Ozil uh, was about was I think 20 years old. Yeah. And you, you see, that? you mentioned some important point of Spanish national team mm. still under not Luis Aragonés. Vicente, Vicente del Bosque, Vicente del Bosque was still Bosque, the coach. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. of course, that is the time they won the World Cup, right? Yes. yes, yes and yes. you can you can even name the squad yeah. for, I mean, for, for Spain: ahead. Ica Casillas ah, in yeah. between goalposts. Yeah. I think right back is is is. Sergio Ramos Sergio, is playing, Sergio Ramos and Carlos play Puyol. And Puyol, Puyol. Then Piquet. I think Gerard yeah. Piquet is playing the other yes, side. Yes, yes, yes. yes then yes. on the left You'd side... You'd had a young Jordi Alba. Jordi Alba, a very Jordi young Alba, Alba, but I think Capdevilla. And Capdevilla was, yeah. Cap oh, yeah, Cap was, was playing. Was the starting line. Yes, was yes. in the starting, starting lineup. Mark, yes, then yeah. now the midfield pack. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Xavi oh. Hernandez and Iniesta. Iniesta and Busquets. And Busquets. Then David Villa now up front. Because I think Fernando Torres couldn't get a spot. And then David Silva was coming into the squad. David Silva. Silva, Santi Cazola, and Santi Cazola, and, uh, and uh, those, uh, those, they were playing a false number nine, <laughs> nine. with Fabregas, <laughs> with Fabregas. Yes, a yes. false number nine, yeah. they didn't have a And striker. I think now that's the prime Fabregas, yes. now yes. coming from yes, Arsenal, yes, yes, yes. sparkling form, mm, mm. I think that is the time you could name, even for a support of England like myself, yeah. We just had the problem with goalkeeping. Goalkeeping was a problem. Let us be honest. It, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> and the no, we had David James. David no? James. We had a lot of options. We had Paul Robinson, David James, Robert Green. I, I, I remember a lot of it them was Robert Green who did the problem with the. They remember the South African World Cup came also with its own football. 
Mm -hmm. It was called the Jabulani. Yes, the Jabulani. Jabulani. Yeah, and, and they, they kept they, on complaining yeah, about that yeah, ball. Yeah, that is slippery. <laughs> and that's how it slid away from Robert <laughs> Green. Robert but Green. Another, another thing that now mm. that it's been 10 years, mm. and I've been, I was watching those documentaries and everything and all that, mm. then I realized that the African icons played a big part in the World Cup without people actually knowing about it. Remember, it, everybody called it the Nelson Mandela World Cup. Mm. Remember, even in the bidding process, Nelson Mandela went to Zurich. Mm. You had the Kofi Annans coming. He was from Ghana, yes, but he was championing for South Africa. Desmond Tutu mm. standing there. Tabo Mbeki. These are the people who stood. And you realize that past the World Cup, Africa can actually come together for a certain cause. And we did that for the World Cup. Yes. And there's no other World Cup that we'll ever see that will go past the South African World Cup. In, in terms of another African uh, country hosting it? Even other uh, countries in the world. I, I, I mean, uh, if you look at four years later in Brazil, Brazil really now made a riot. Yeah. They stole, the, they stole the, the, the horn, our horn, the, Afri our <laughs> the African Vuzela. horn. The Vuvuzela, they took yeah. it to Rio. <laughs> um, obviously, Brazil being... The home of football. Arguably the home of football or the heart of football. Yes. Again, that had a new twist to it. Mm -hmm. But in 2018, having it now in Russia yeah. was, was, was unprecedented. If you, if you think about it, mm -hmm. you know, World Cup in a very cold place, in a very mm -hmm. communist sort of state. Yeah. So you, you sit down and then there were now the ideas of having Qatar hosting the next one. In 2022. And in 2022, and it had but, a lot but, of but, backlashes. But you see... The African World Cup was the World Cup that championed for rotation. Yes. Remember? Yes, yes. The yes, World yes. Cup that championed for rotation. So we might see it coming back to Africa no, it after will. Definitely. some time. Definitely. It will come you back. See what, what, what now African countries need to do, even yeah. presidents of uh, these uh, African nations need to do, is to advocate and push for you know, improvement in infrastructure. Mm. Because... I think for world governing body FIFA under then say Blatt as the president giving the mantle to SA, yeah. a lot of factors came into play, you mm -hmm. know, well equipped facilities, you know, mm -hmm. South Africa. You see, I used to think that the capital city for South Africa is Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Oh, it's Pretoria. It's Pretoria. <laughs> and we also have Durban. Yes. We also have Cape Town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see, in Kenya, mm -hmm. we have Blue Nairobi. Nairobi. Uh -huh. yeah. And I think Nairobi maybe is the equivalent version of these small cities in SA. Mm -hmm. So I think facilities in terms of improvement mm -hmm. and ensuring that, you know, facilities are at an advanced stage. Morocco can try Morocco, because we've yes. seen Northern African nations Egypt, also beating. Egypt did African Cup of Nations very well. Yes. Yeah, Egypt yes. has also. Yeah, yeah. Egypt, I think it can it also showed, do. It showed that it has the facilities to hold yes. a World Cup. A World Cup, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. I think nostalgic moments of FIFA World Cup, but I think <laughs> my, memor my, my memorable one. <laughs> yeah. The Samba Boys, <laughs> five-time World Cup champions, yeah. being thrashed seven one by Germany. My goodness, that was the best. For ah, that was the best. Yeah. I was, I was, I was in studio that day. Yeah. I think I was doing radio commentary that game. Uh -huh. Brazil, German with Bernardo Kumu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So analysis was juicy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Brazil conceding. <laughs> you were hammering the Samba Boys. Ah, I was getting impressed. <laughs> It is the touchline here on Y254, just remembering some of the football moments that we had from the World Cup 2010 and others that are coming our way. But for now, let's come back to what is happening this weekend as we go ahead. Maxwell, you can give us the fixtures of the La Liga that are coming out this weekend and see Barcelona, Real Madrid, final stages right now after the COVID-19. Do you think they'll come back with that rivalry? Yeah, against Mallorca yes. yesterday, I, I believe um, uh, Barcelona will pick up points against Mallorca. Mm -hmm. Yes, Real Madrid is also going to pick up points. Yeah. Um, what we should be wary about is now the match fitness. Uh -huh, you can be players. yeah, match fit. You mm -hmm. can be fit yourself in terms of your peak performance, mm -hmm. but now it's one thing being fit and it's another thing being match fit. Yeah. Understanding the tactics, mm -hmm. remembering that, for example, you know Barcelona's strategic. Johan Cruyff principle of containment, possession, yes. short passes with uh, an additional maybe runner up top. Mm -hmm. Does Will Messi still remember the same thing? Will Messi be still as sharp as he was? As he was Last yeah. night we thought uh, Cristiano Ronaldo would have done 
uh -huh, marvelous yeah, stuff, but yeah. he ended up even missing a penalty. Yeah. And then it was dubbed the most expensive miss because he's a billionaire right now. So <laughs> <laughs> There was a exciting moment, yes. <laughs> in, the, in the world of football. Yes, 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 yes. I think the talking point since football resumed was, you know, lack of fans in, in the, the stadium. Stadiums, yes. But I think I've liked something. I watched that game between Sevilla and 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 Betis, and, Betis, and you yes. know that virtual kind of mm -hmm. uh, uh, sound. Sound. Yes. Mm. I think bring that aspect of it, you know, it, it as if fans are in the stadium, you just enjoy the following. Or, in Tokyo, uh, the they had put dolls. The game. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. In Tokyo, they put dolls. Yeah. But, but they had put I, teddy bears I, and everything. I, 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 <laughs> actually, by the way, I was I was watching Zapan, I was yeah, watching Sevilla against <laughs> Betis with yeah. someone. Then I was asking myself, "Kwani, kuna mashabi kwa wanja?" Kumbe, kumbe, you know, like, like, like those uh, PlayStation fans. Yeah, yes, it's, yes, uh, yes, yes. improvised. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. the way they're doing it just to spice up the game so that people can continue catching the game on the screen. So you know now joe having enjoying having enjoyed a three months without subscribing for uh, <laughs> benefiting multi choice <laughs> now it's high time <laughs> now you're putting me in the, in the sports again multi choice kenya please i have been subscribing and i'll still continue subscribing <laughs> so you asked about the, the fixtures lined up yeah, today yeah, Celta Vigo <laughs> against uh, villarreal i think four matches on card as far as spanish la liga is concerned yeah. espanol Against Alaves coming at 3 p.m. East mm. African time, then Celta Vigo against Villarreal mm -hmm. at 6. Uh, Leganes against Valladolid mm -hmm. at 8.30, then later on in late kickoff time, mm -hmm. yeah. Mallorca against Barcelona. I think that is the game some, everyone will be yeah. looking forward to. That mm -hmm. is today's fix. Of course, Bundesliga continues. Yeah. Monchen Gladbach against. Bayern Munich, Bayern. I think if Bayern wins today, then they the Bundesliga the title is sealed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Considering yeah, that, that there is. Seven points are drift between Bayern Munich mm -hmm. and, uh, and Dortmund. Dortmund. So yeah. I think it's done. It's done, yes. RB Leipzig have been rising and rising and rising. Mm. Even if they finish third or second, mm. it will be a good season for them. It will be. and But also there will be the loss of their star left their star striker. striker. Team yeah. of one. Team of one. If yeah. he goes that void to replace mm -hmm. it's going to it's all going to be easy yeah and and also you see the team leipzig is not very facilitated in terms of financial backing yeah you didn't compare it with borussia dortmund you didn't compare it with bayern munich even but bayern red Leverkusen. bull has tried yeah the red bull has tried right, yeah. you know keeping those players making yeah. sure those players get what they need yeah they have tried yeah but yeah. i think these teams with financial muscles do other uh, upcoming clubs a big disservice you saw what happened to Ajax Amsterdam mm -hmm. after their heroic exploits in the UEFA Champions League yeah, yeah, football? True, true. A lot true. of all the players, uh, you true. know, high-profile players yeah. getting swept off. Yeah. Now Monaco. ZH at Chelsea, mm. uh, Delitz at Juventus, mm. then De Jong, De Jong at Barcelona. Barcelona. Mm. I think this is the same thing that might happen to Rip, Leipzig, yeah. Leipzig. Uh, under you know their coach. Who I'm reliably informed, I think he was coached by Jose Mourinho at some point. Julian, yes, at 32 year yeah. old, mm. and yeah. I think a lot of high-profile players in that particular squad, mm. Upe Meccano, yes. might, they be might be living. Be living. So what will save yeah. such, such teams, and yeah. I wanted to, again to mention when Maxwell was saying it, yeah. is the academy. Yeah. Ajax have a beautiful academy whereby players, just, it's, it's, like, it's like a rotation system. Guys are sold, other players are coming in from the academy. Yeah. That's the same thing Leipzig has to do. And they have to, to perform and yes. prove that yes, they yes, deserve yes. And now to that, So that, the academy is very important for these teams. And now, yeah. now you mm -hmm. see, that's how important the role of technical director is. Yes, it's yes, like yes. Edwin van der Sar has been at the helm yes. in charge of Ajax and I think he has ensured that there is continuity mm. yes. to feed a system from lower level to yes. you know, the senior team. Mm. And then the other semi-final today in Coppa Italia, Napoli versus Inter Milan. Big match that mm. is going to be playing there and the winner will be going against Juventus in the final. Well, Napoli having a, a one-goal advantage again going into this um, i believe that inter milan can overturn this yeah. and we have a scintillating juventus versus inter milan in the final wow there's our last word from joe Saina here on the fans on arm robert osoro we have been hanging out as usual with maxwell wasike we'll be back next week with the best of the touchline but you know for me i'm still here yeah. just waiting for oh, masi mwangangi yes to come with you know the daily press conference from the IFI House, just updating the nation on uh, the latest mm -hmm. amid coronavirus, yeah. how many have tested positive in the last 24 hours, mm -hmm. and you know the protocols government continue to put in place to ensure that we suppress 
yes. this pandemic. So I'm hoping to see Masi Mwangangi soon. But whichever the case, even if it's honorable, Mutai, I'm still here.